When Dobby got back, he sat at the bar and watched the news. When Keiko returned to his house, he got another vision. Please tell me they're lying! He can't be dead! The small-winged boy pleaded, but unfortunately, I can't say. I'm sorry, Keiko. He's dead, and there's nothing we can do. The small, dirty blonde fell to the floor, crying. Keigo woke up on the floor of his home. Ugh, my head. Then, the average height male remembered what happened. Wait, why... That thought was... You know what? Never mind, I'm going to bed. Or, that's what he thought. Just as he was about to head upstairs, he got a call from Mirko. Hawks, we need you in Hosu now. No time to explain, just get over here. As she hung up, Hawks was confused and worried, but he still did as he was told. He put on his costume and took to the skies. When he made it there, he was horrified by what he saw. It looked to be clones of him, but at all different ages. But one stood out to him, the one holding an action figure. He looked around and went over to the clone and said nothing, wrapping his arms around the boy without a word. Hey, what are you doing, creep? A small boy asked. Keigo looked at him. I'm you in 2020. Don't worry about Toya right now. We know that I know that you know he's not dead, don't you? He asked. The small boy nodded. After a while, they were able to get rid of Keigo's past and future clones. Now, he was even more confused, until he got another vision. The last thing he heard before passing out was the bunny girl screaming. Hawks! It trailed off. And suddenly, remember, Hawks, anyone with a teleportation quirk can remake the clones of a person, so they are never gone. It trailed off again. That memory was from when he was 14. He woke up in a hospital. When he awoke, he screamed. Remember, clones, never gone, teleportation. A doctor suddenly came in. Hawks, please calm down. He turned to the nurse beside him. Get me a shock blanket and some sedatives. After the nurse disappeared and returned with the requested items and got Hawks to calm down, Keigo explained the visions he had been having. These visions are from my past. The doctor prescribed him some medicine, while at the league, Kurogiri injected Dabi with drugs in hopes to help him. Both Dabi and Keigo had no luck. They continued to have visions, and this time, it was the same one. Come on, Keigo. Don't be scared. I'm not! Age 5. The next was very similar. Keigo, you're being a chicken. We aren't gonna get caught. Okay, okay, fine. But if we get in trouble, it's your fault. Ages 9 and 10. The dreams continued on, clips and clips forming like a movie, replaying over and over, until... Both of their alarms went off, both waking up very confused. When they looked into the mirror, they were too surprised to form words, and not in the way you might think. Hello, this is Ray post-recording, just wanting to check in to see how y'all are doing. And I decided to leave this bit at the end, just to keep it away from everything else. As a small recap, this is the second episode to The Ultimate Killer Bunnies YouTuber Scavenger Hunt. If you want to check out what happens next, be sure to check out the next person and subscribe to them, who is going to be Little Bakugo Lover. Also, if you want to see where this all started, be sure to check out the first episode over on KB's channel, and subscribe while you're there. And as a future ref, 
be sure to subscribe to everybody who will be taking part in this storytelling. They're all amazing people, very talented, you should go check them out.